Hey everybody, NJ, Cody Ironworks. I thought we'd do a short little, Jeff and I thought we'd do a short little video on uh, the, the tire hammer that we built. You know, we've been working on this for a couple months. We actually uh, laid it out on the floor of the shop right over here and started gathering components. Um, I think I'm about $100 into it, maybe $110. The only components we really bought out of pocket was the tire, the bolts, uh, this adjustable shackle, that's, of course, that's out of a tractor. What do they call those? Jeff, you know what that is called? Third arm. A third, the third, that's a third arm out of a tractor. And then I spent 40 bucks on a treadmill. Um, and then I bought this piece of steel at one of our local uh, machine shops. This is a drop. That weighed 45 pounds. I think I paid 20 bucks for that. And I swapped the neighbor for some knives for his wife for Christmas for a whole bunch of those uh, leaf springs that are at the top. Well, we designed the camera. The only length that, was, that we really knew was we were gonna use that spring. So we laid that spring on the floor and we designed the rest of the hammer around the length of throw that that spring had. Now, I took off the short top leaf out of that spring and I think, before it's all said and done, we might take one more out so we get a little more whip. The hammer doesn't really whip very much, and um, they should. You should get some whip in there where the where when the spring comes down, it gets some flex up and some flex down. Um, Jeff and I pretty much had all the rest of everything in the shop. We started with a 10-inch tire, and that didn't work. It didn't have enough, and I had a bigger arbor, so we... Because the motor is a DC motor out of a treadmill, they call it, it's one and a horse, one and a quarter horsepower is what they say. And it's plenty powerful to run what we've got here. We're actually thinking about adding more weight now. Um, we were blowing fuses in it uh, initially with the smaller tire. So we put a 12 inch tire on it with bigger and better bearings. Um, at some point we'll probably change it out and put a hubbed tire on if we can find one. But you know we're in Cody in the middle of the in the middle of Corona Armageddon, so we can't do that right now. But eventually we probably will find a find a real tire with a real hub on it. But this works really good. We stiffened up the back using uh, some of the tubing off of the treadmill, and that really worked good. Um, and how it works is the motor rocks into the tire, and I'm sure you guys have seen us run it. Um, because of the DC motor the way it is, you can actually you can actually reverse with just the switch of two wires. You can actually re reverse the direction of the motor and it'll run either way. And because it's a DC motor, you can run it on a potentiometer. So so here I'll show you. Uh, so when you step on this, it just rocks the motor into the tire, and that's what runs it. And then you use one of these third arm linkages because you can adjust the stroke. Okay, so the only real parts I had to wire in were I, I this is this piece with this 10 amp fuse, and this is kind of a dead man. So this is actually the cord and the original plug-in that came off of the treadmill. Then what I did is I wired in, I got on eBay, I ordered a $7 potentiometer, and there's a bridge rectifier in here that I plugged in to, to, that changes the 110 into 90 volt DC. And um, that was really it. Um, it's kind of a funny thing. The steel came out when uh, the Buffalo Bill Dam was getting rebuilt in the late 80s. The steel came out of uh, the dam. The spring came from uh, I think probably a snowmobile trailer. Um, some of the hard work came from my dad, <laughs> who brought me some 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 of the steel. And here we'll run it quickly. Um, I'll just plug it in, and you can hear it run, and you can hear how we can adjust it. So it runs quiet, but you can hear it. It kicks on automatically, really fast. So you can slow it down. I left the big counterweight on it. I figured it wasn't going to hurt anything. So we left the counterweight on it. 
so it'll run very slow or I can really kick it up and that's pretty fast <laughs> okay so for right now just because I don't have a hot piece of steel we'll throw this piece of aluminum bar in there so this is a police this is just a piece of aluminum bar and you'll get a chance to see it yeah. see that it's actually moving that material um, and I have forced a couple of knife blades on it we probably will change out the design a little bit I'd like to put some real bearings on the back um, we might add some weight in here like I said we might end up taking some springs out so we get more width but literally we designed the machine on the floor over here as far as I know, there's not too many like this one. As far as I know, it's the only one in existence like this. Um, so if anybody has any questions or wants to come to the shop and take some lessons or get some measurements on it, um, let me know. Okay, Jeff, let's just swing over there and we'll talk about the, we'll talk about the, the treadle hammer too. So this is a tool that I should have, I should have made myself this tool 25 years ago. Um, this has pretty much taken the place of the big KA7, KA75 air hammer in a lot of instances. I use this for doing almost all of the decorative work on the back plates now. Um, of course, I didn't have, uh, you know, 20 years ago, I didn't have the ability to set up this up. Uh, Jeff actually found this anvil. It's a 350 pound bridge anvil or oil, wheel, oil field anvil. Um, the stand probably weighs 100 pounds. It's a huge, it's all heavy walled tubing. Uh, new, my dad gave me the piece of I-beam. I have no idea where he got it. Uh, the, this, this sledgehammer, I'm pretty sure this one came I think I had this one. It might have came from, maybe Shane gave me this one. I might have had it. Uh, but I had to put a new handle in it. Um, and again, this was one of those things that we, I didn't really design it. I built it and I wanted it this high. And what I did is I made a, a tool. So this can, it's just chained down, but I can take this tool off. And if I want to use tall tooling in there, like, like if you want, if you want to use drifts or punches, you can use drift or punches in this on stock um, like this, but in actuality, it works really good with the tooling that I've made for the KA75. So I could do splitting and cutting. I can do um, a lot of fullering. I've made some tools that will do some fullering on here. And this son of a gun, this son of a gun will also hit. So I think that's a, probably a 15 and a half or 16 pound sledgehammer head on there. And you get quite a bit of leverage. I have made a ton of tooling already for this um, because it's just because it's so easy, you know. Um, here's a little here's a little fullering block I made. It just slides in there. That's a piece of truck string. It just drops in the square hardy hole, and you just slide that on there. And then here's a little here's a little baby flatter that I made for flatting. I used this today to do some uh, draw knives that I made. Um, this tool gets used almost as much as the big hit button. So um, thanks everybody. If you like the content, please, please go to the Etsy, go to the Cody Ironworks Etsy store and just like some stuff, share some stuff, comment on some stuff. Um, I'm selling some swag on there. Uh, hopefully we'll be selling some of these stickers on there soon as soon as I can find a, as soon as I can uh, find somebody who can consistently, who can consistently produce them for us. Um, so uh, thanks everybody and uh, get it hot and hit it. And always wear your safety squints.